Did you choose a qualitative method for your research and now face the challenge of creating your first codes, categories or themes inductively? And what does that even mean? In this video, I will walk you through the entire process of inductive coding using a step-by-step -step example. At the end of this tutorial, you will have everything you need to start coding your own qualitative data. And now, without further ado, welcome to Try. Inductive coding is a specific technique in qualitative research. Whether you follow the recommendations of thematic analysis, content analysis or grounded theory, all these approaches involve some form of inductive coding. However, if you read a methods book for the first time, you might be confused about how to actually do it. So let's do it together. For our example, let's assume you are working on a project about collaboration using virtual reality in the workplace. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a company sent VR headsets to a couple of employees and held weekly team meetings in a VR app. You are now accompanying the study by interviewing the employees about their experiences as part of your research. It is important to lay the right foundation for analyzing your interviews before you even conduct them. This means that you have a broad research objective or a more concrete research question in mind before you start interviewing. The good thing about qualitative research is that it's often very exploratory, looking at new and emerging topics and phenomena. This fits well with an inductive analysis, which entails that you do not have a strong theoretical framing that you use to guide your analysis later. For mainly inductive qualitative research, you therefore need a slightly broader research question and can start without a specific theory in mind. For your interview questions, this means that they are very open and you lead the interview to where it gets interesting, rather than structuring your questions strictly according to a theory you read about. A suitable overarching question for our example could be, how do knowledge workers collaborate on a team level when using a virtual reality application? You can get more specific if you think this question has been addressed multiple times in previous research, but for simplicity we'll stick with this question for the sake of this video. In your literature review, you aim to become an expert in this area and check if you find helpful papers that you could build on to solve a more narrow problem that previous research has not tackled. A deductive approach, in contrast, would look quite different. Suppose the company's employees work with heavy machinery and already need to concentrate a lot. Here you could use a theory like the cognitive load theory to design your interview questions and guide your analysis. The theory provides specific dimensions to structure your study. These are, if you will, pre-made codes and categories into which you sort your data. This means the interview quotes that you collect. Your interview data analysis then follows a deductive approach and not an inductive one, based on the predetermined theoretical framework. But now Let's see how we can create codes from scratch in a bottom-up inductive fashion. Inductive coding means that your codes emerge from the material itself. Codes are just labels that summarize a bunch of similar data. So if three of the employees, for example, talk about a similar issue they encountered, you give these parts in your interview transcripts the same code, like being overwhelmed by the functionalities of the virtual meeting room. The goal is to reduce or summarize all your material, in our example, all interviews, to the essentials. This means that you want to end up with a list of codes that are representative of your entire dataset in relation to your research objective. If someone looks at that list, they know exactly what the interviews experienced when collaborating in VR. This also means that if something that people said is not relevant to team collaboration in VR, you don't need to code it. To make it a little easier, you can follow these five steps to build your first inductive codes. Step one, determine the unit of analysis. 
In our example, this could be each complete statement of an employee about their VR collaboration experience. So essentially every answer to an interview question. Other units of analysis could be every sentence or every line in an interview transcript. Step two, paraphrase the statements. This means cleaning up the statements from unnecessary details and writing them down clearly. In our example, it could look like this. From, I often had problems with dizziness during fast movements in our VR meeting. You make dizziness during fast movements. This is also sometimes referred to as reduction. Step three, set the level of abstraction. Be aware of how far you need to go from your material to developing a code, which may consist only of two or three words. So pretty simplistic. The initial codes you form are typically pretty close to the actual data in the wording, for example. The level of abstraction is then raised later in your analysis. After you have a list of maybe 50 initial codes or so, you can further summarize them and make them more abstract. Then you end up with six or seven categories or themes, which are more abstract than your initial codes. How this abstraction works in detail depends on the approach you follow. While the first step, the initial list of codes, is pretty similar in all qualitative methods that involve inductive coding, the steps that follow can be quite different. Please watch my method-specific tutorials on thematic analysis, grounded theory and so on if you want to learn more. Now before we get to step number four, please consider giving this video a like if you enjoyed the content. It would really help me out a lot. Step four, summarize the statements into codes. In inductive coding, it's important to go through the statements one by one and assign each one to a code. If the next statement is, I had some difficulties when I was trying to take notes with the VR controller, you check if this fits into the existing code, dizziness during fast movements, and if not, you create a new one like difficulties with handling the hardware. Step five, review. Your list of codes gradually forms and grows. At first, it makes sense to create more different codes rather than fewer. If you find that your list contains 57 codes and many are similar, you can perform another step of summarization and just merge those that are very similar. Reviewing means going back and forth from the original material and your list of codes and comparing both. Does the list of codes appropriately reflect what the employee said? Now before we end the video, let's look at some common pitfalls in inductive coding. I often observe that the guidance from methods books, especially on inductive coding, is perceived too dogmatically. Students often fear that deviating from the guidelines could be wrong. This is commendable, but if you reach a point with your data where the next step that a methods book suggests doesn't work for you, it's up to you as a researcher to make an independent decision, do it differently and justify it in your methods section. You can and should deviate from the plan if necessary. Qualitative methods are not a standard instrument that always look the same. They must be adapted to the specific material and constructed towards the specific research question. As long as you proceed systematically, justify your decisions and describe them precisely, everything is fine.